you don't really get into without a lot of prayer. Once you get into it, you wish you had it. But when you get through with it, you're glad you did. Because it helps. And it's, uh, it's one of those evil things we have to deal with. Amen. Well, today, we're coming to the second part of the armor. And we talked about the armor for the defense. And today, we're going to be talking about the armor for the offense. In my studies of the Word of God, I recently, in my quiet time, came across 1 Chronicles chapter 7. There was something that leaked out at me. It states in there that the men who were the descendants of the original sons of Israel are Jacob, who make up the beginning of the 12 tribes of Israel. It says of those men, listen to this very carefully, it says they were all warriors. Not only that, but that they were all warriors who were ready for war. One of those descendants was a man by the name of Joshua. When Moses was still alive and leading Israel in the wilderness, Joshua was the leader of the army. In Exodus chapter 17, Moses is on the mount interceding and praying for Joshua, the general, and his army while they're fighting the Amalekites down the valley. We have the beautiful contrast with how war, how war, how battle and prayer go together. Moses is interceding, Joshua's fighting. But you see, really, both of them are fighting. Because when we pray in spiritual warfare, we're fighting for those who are facing the battle that maybe we're not facing, but we know they are. And I say all that to say that we have discovered from Paul that we are in a war as Christians. We are in a battle. We're supposed to be like athletes in that we play by the rules. We get to be like the farmer who plants the seed and waits for the first fruit and we get to enjoy that. But Paul says when it comes to the title that we wear as followers of Jesus Christ, although we live like farmers and we live like or act like athletes, what we really are is soldiers in God's army. We're soldiers. And so he makes that very clear to us. And so we have learned in the first part of our series that we have armor for the offense and armor for the defense. And I want to begin today by saying to you that we need to put on the whole armor of God because the times we live in require that we wake up. In chapter 5, verses 15 to 17, Paul says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are what? Wise. In other words, he says, be wise people. Make the most of every opportunity in what? These evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Be wise, because we live in evil days, but the way to survive in evil days is not only to be wise, Paul says, but to do what the Lord wants you to do. Our primary worship of the God is our obedience, not our praise or our singing or even our Bible study. It's our obedience. We had an evangelist friend years ago. He used to talk about Baptists being the book people. And he said, you know, we are the book people. He said, the problem is we can't get the book people to do what the book says do. So Paul said to the times that are evil, the evil days require that we wake up. What's it been like for you recently? Let me start a couple of examples to illustrate the point here. My wife and I were backing out the driveway on Friday. We must go to breakfast with some friends of ours. She's often with the 
with you. And I love that I have my wife at home right now. So I'm enjoying that. I'm spoiled already. So we're back in the out of the driveway on Friday morning to go uh, have breakfast with some friends. And we noticed that one of our cars that we had parked in the driveway, she noticed, because she tends to notice things like these better than I do. She said, honey, the, the front door of our car, that, it's, it's, it's open a little bit. And I looked at it and said, you know, it was open just enough to be kind of was. So I put the car in park, put on the brake, and I let the car run, got out and over the Sure enough, the car door was open, and I was able to just pull the door open. And I noticed that the paint was chipped where they had chipped in the lock to get the car open. And what else you need to know is, the night before, I couldn't sleep, and I got up about 1.30, and I went down to turn on the TV. I'm fully convinced that that's when they left. I believe the Lord woke me up so I could impede the progress of the thieves. So I'm standing at, uh, later on in the day, I'm uh, talking with our neighbors across the street, and I tell them what happened, and they say, well, you know, we see a lot of that. And then one of our neighbors, a guy by the name of Jerry, there's an IT guy uh, for, for a company for Altura Company. Uh, he said, you know, he said, people are really desperate right now. We're going to see more and more of this. People are desperate. Why are people desperate? People are desperate because of nature. Friday afternoon, we had some uh, business at the bank, so we stopped our bank. And it just so happens, we bank at the Bank of America in uh, Corona that was... Uh, that had the uh, arm, armored uh, truck that was where there was the attempted robbery about three weeks ago. You saw the news. We live, less, we live about a mile from that bank. They now have an armed security officer in front of that bank every day of the week when the bank's open, except for something. When you walk up, this guy is really a nice guy, but I'm telling you, he looks like a SWAT team. Here. Seriously, he looks like a SWAT team. He's packing heat. He's got on a bulletproof vest. He's ready for action. So I've got to know You know me. I, I, I have such a hard time meeting people. And I, 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 <laughs> so I, I began to carry on conversations with the various times. And so Friday, I just, Sandy was doing the banking business. I was teaching her how to do something we need to do. And since I had her there, I was like a trainer on that. And so she was going to take care of the business. So I'm out there talking to him. See, by the way, I said, called him my name. I said, officer, by the way, I said, no. Uh, I think all those guys that tried to rob the armed truck they just shoot at me. He said, uh, no, and he said, uh, they probably did. So no. He said, yeah, he said, he said, you know, I talked with, 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 with the police officers, and he said, and the investigator, he said, you don't see this in the newspapers, and you don't hear this on the news, the police guys on me. He said, there's hundreds of these guys. He said, not only can they not catch me, he said, they can't. 